so welcome back. Um, so this is the last class for the semester for the year, and I see Olivia is very sad. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we'll continue uh, with sequences and series. Uh, so today, the last class for the year, the topic is called recurrence relations. Uh. Um, so I'm going to first do an overview uh, to tell everyone what this class is about. Um, this is important uh, because I think part of the class is easy and useful, part of the class is difficult and useless, and then part of the class is difficult and useful. Okay? So, uh, but the overview is important to everyone. Um, so, uh, one, two, three. So the first one is, I want everyone to know that uh, a lot of real problems, by real problems, I mean real world problems, are defined by recurrence relations. Uh, do you agree? If you don't, you don't agree, that's okay. After you do homework this week, you'll agree. Okay. Uh, basically, when we have a real world problems, uh, it usually came up in the term of in the form of recurrence relations. Now uh, as you figured out, not from this week's homework, but from last week's homework, the one that you just kind of got graded, observing patterns in those kind of sequences, do you remember? And then describing it in recurrence relations. Easier. Um, so do you remember in the, the homework that you just got, when you try to come up with the formula, that's actually really hard. Yeah. Okay? But if I just ask you, can you describe the relation? Oh, it is the previous term plus 6, is the previous term plus 8, is the previous term plus 10. It's actually a lot easier. Okay? So what is, but then finding the formula is, is the hard, hard part. So um, I want to give an example from the homework that you just got. Do you remember there was this kind of sequence? 6, 12, 20, 30, and 42. And ask you to come up with the formula. Well, the homework that you just got, one of, one of those homework problems. Uh, so n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I think a lot of you kind of get the formula, get a close form formula, but it's actually pretty hard. But if I ask you, can you write a recurrence relation? It's equal to the previous one plus one. So 30 is equal to 20 plus. 10, 10. 10 is, what's the relationship between 10 oh. and 4? So this is a recurrence relations. So describing the recurrence relation is a lot simpler than actually coming up with the, with the formula. So um, it gets to number two, okay? So today's class is to teach you some methods to We're going to teach you three methods, uh, one, two, three, for simple, I want to emphasize, is simple recurrence relations. Okay? Um, and I will also want to tell you that only 
one and three are useful. Okay. I'll still show you one, two, three, but two is actually a little bit pointless. Okay. But I'll still show it to you. Now I'm going to construct on the right hand side here a table. Actually, uh, let me do it here. Um, so mathematics, uh, by this time, you already have seen a lot of different types of equations. Uh, so there's something called just uh, solving equations. Can you see it here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, for example, there's a simple one. If 3x plus 2 is equal to 5, okay, and you solve what x is. So this is what we call linear equation. And then some of you also learn something called quadratic, quadratic equation. Something like 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. Okay. Now some of you also know what is called simultaneous equation. Simultaneous. Which basically say you have two equations, x plus 2y is equal to 5, x minus 3y is equal to 10, and then you solve this given. Can I get a show of hand? Does anyone know this second one and the third one? Who knows who, who has solved, uh, who knows how to solve a quadratic equation? Hello, Daisy. Okay. Now, um, in this class, or some of you, I think many of you, also have solved something called congruences. Remember those questions where we say A, X is congruent to B? Modulo m, modulo m, so like three x, uh, modulo one, mod seven, something like this. Okay. So um, we did not learn the congruences that are quadratic. Okay, it exists. Okay, but can anyone? I hope someone can give me the answer. What do solving simultaneous congruence Equations called. It's like it's like common in let's say like those like Chinese we made yeah. here okay. So that's uh that's called the Chinese remainder theorem. Okay. Now we just kind of have a third set of um <laughs> new <laughs> new type of equation called recurrence relations. And that's what we're going to solve, uh, talk about in this class, recurrence relations. And the one that we're going to solve uh, is very simple. A n plus alpha A n minus one plus beta A n minus two is equal to zero. Alpha and beta are constant. Or numbers. Uh, I don't know why people like to call this alpha and beta, but think of this is a it's a number like two, three, four, five. Alpha and beta are just number. Can we use x and y? Just no, because x and y usually is uh, for variable. Oh, for algebra. But then we cannot use a and b either because recurrence relations usually usually use a and b. Then n and m, n and m. The subscript is n. Oh, um, apples and oranges. <laughs> okay, so uh, we are not doing crazy thing like quadratic recurrence relations. We are also not doing crazy things like simultaneous recurrence relations. Okay, although if you have done the homework, um, submitted the homework today, there was one is kind of related to two recurrence relations. Express one in terms of the other. I believe that was question number four. <coughs> four F. Four F, yes. Okay. Clearly, Rafi just did the homework today, so that's why he remembered. <laughs> okay, uh, so one, two, and I'll promise the third one, okay? Uh, and uh, what I consider to be the finale of uh, this year's uh, quantum quantum map circle uh, is we're going to solve Fibonacci sequence. 
Oh. Okay, great. At least one, one, one kid is very excited about it. Okay. So Fibonacci sequence, remember, is Fn is equal to the sum of the previous two. The first one is zero, and then the second one is one. Okay. That's called Fibonacci sequence. Okay. So with that, I'll give everyone 20 seconds to copy this down, this down and then we can <gasps> begin the real class. This is the overview. Relations. Remember that the homework that you just got, we want a n is equal to something expressing in n. Like n squared plus 1 or n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so uh, let's kind of begin the class. Uh, so we're done with the overview. So the first one, remember uh, method 1 and method 3 are important. Okay. So uh, we will start method one. is uh, is an important, is a useful one, and it is called telescoping. A n is equal to a n minus one, the previous term, plus some function of f of n. Okay. Um, we're going to illustrate this method with two examples. The first example, uh, there's nothing better than the one that we just talked about. Okay, this is literally the homework that you just got back. The one that we said, wow, you know, figuring out the recurrence relation is easy, but figuring out the, the formula is hard. Okay. Um, so telescoping is just a fancy name of saying, let's just kind of write it like this. The difference between concept, uh, successive term, 2n minus 2n minus 1 is equal to 2n plus 2. Okay. And let's just kind of write a field. a2 minus a1 is equal to 2 times 2 plus 2. a3 minus a2 is equal to 2 times 3. Plus two. Uh, William, what's the next one? Oh, uh, a four minus a three is equal to two times four plus two. Yep. So just continue, and then the last one is a n minus a n minus one. Uh, I'm just copying the formula again. Okay. How many rows are there in total? Olivia. N. William. N minus one. N minus one. Because it starts as two and all the way to N. So it's N minus one. Okay. So uh so we have N minus one equations. What if we sum them all? On the left hand side, uh I said, if we sum everything on the left hand side, what do we have? <coughs> Negative a1 plus mm -hmm. a n. Mm -hmm. And this is basically the trick of telescoping. So you cancel everything on the left hand side. Now, on the right hand side, we can basically write it out. So it's 2 times 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus all the way to n, which is this one. 
2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, all the way to 2 times n. And then we also have plus 2 for n minus 1 times. If you plus 2 for n minus 1 times, then that means it's plus 2 times n minus 1. Uh, can I get a show of sign about how's everyone feeling so far about this? Slow down, okay, slow down. slow down. Slow down. The longer the lecture, the better, because it's the last yes. class of the year. Yes! Now over. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's continue. Um, so we know what A1 is, right? A1 is uh, just... I have to go down. A1 is just 6. So AN minus 6. On the right-hand side, so it's 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way to n, right? And I don't like that. And I'm just going to say, I want to start from 1. And then I minus 2. Again, I, I added the 1 here, so I have to subtract it back. Is everyone with me? So instead of 2 plus 3 plus 4 inside, I say I add a 1 here, and then I subtract it outside the parenthesis. And then plus 2 n minus 2, I remove the parentheses, 2 times n minus 2. Johannes? Uh, what does the n minus 1 e g equal n? Oh, equations. S. Okay. It's equations. Okay. Yeah, it's very clear that it is equations. It wasn't. Until you look very closely then you know it is equations. So um, this one, then there is a n. Again, you can move the 6 to here. Okay, 2 n minus 2 minus 2 and then plus 6. So then basically in the end, you have something like 2 n plus 2. Again, minus 6 moves to this side, is plus 6. Minus 2 minus 2, so that's plus 2. So what is 1 plus 2 plus 3 to plus n? What is this called? E. Olivia? Number? What's the formula for triangular number? Daisy? Um, Daisy, raise it right? really fast. Let's see if she can find the answer just as fast. Um. <laughs> One. Two, oh, three, and, four. And this is one divided by two. Good, fine, easy. Okay, so cancel the two. So then that means it's n times n plus one plus two n plus two. Now I'm going to continue because n, this one is n squared. Okay, and then n plus one is one n. So then that means n plus three n plus 2, okay, and this is actually n plus 1, sorry, n plus 2 times n plus 1. Now when you look back, I'll join us one, one second, um, when you look at the numbers, 6 is 2 times 3, the next number is 12, 3 times 4, uh, the, the sequence, so this is uh, 6, 12, 20, 30, 42, 2 times 3, 3 times 4, 4 times 5, 5 times 6, 6 times 7. Um, usually when you get to a place like this, you will be really frustrated. Why didn't I see it? Okay. So it, it, isn't it obvious once you see this? 2 times 3, 3 times 4, 4 times 5, 5 times 6, 6 times 7. Uh, which uh, I want to say it's a common. Uh, you know a systematic way of solving a problem, then you get to the answer. So you didn't think enough, so you need to do more work to get to the answer. But if you try to think more, look at it more carefully, then you might be able to come up with the answer without doing that much work. Uh, Johannes? Can you explain the part where uh, you do a n minus 6? 
Oh, uh, and also why this is you... A n minus A1, yeah. uh, but A1 is 6, so I just replace it A1 by oh. 6, initial condition. Okay. So I'm going to do one more example. Um, before, yep. Oh, um, why are you using the equation for triangular numbers there? Like the triangular numbers, the one that go one, three, sorry, six, one, three, six, and so on. Wait, what? Yeah, but it's one, one plus two, one plus two plus three. But isn't that calculating the sum of this this sequence? Whoa. Uh, Tri this is the formula for triangular number, and that is summing up a tri a sequence of triangular number. So one is uh, so this one is calculating how many dots are there when it is when the triangle is of depth n. Oh, this formula. Right. But what you are saying here is what if I sum this? I thought that equation was the sum of that. Oh no, no, that equation is just counting and coming. Join us. Never mind. Naomi. Um, for the equation on the third line, uh, on the fourth line, you add 6. Two both sides to get rid of the 6. Mm -hmm. How come? Minus 2, minus 2. Minus 2, minus 2. Plus oh, 6. So it's plus 2. And I create this minus 2 because I, I yes. insert them on here. Okay, second example. Really easy. Uh, it's not far from the end of the first half. The second example, I'm just going to use this little space because that's going to be a little bit easy. So, uh, it's going to be a n is equal to the previous term plus 2. Okay. And the initial condition, a0 is equal to 5. Okay. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to repeat this quote unquote telescope method. A n minus A n minus 1 is equal to 2. Uh, because this time the first is kind of 0, so I'm going to do A 1 minus A 0 is equal to 2 a2 minus a1 is equal to 2. This time I don't need help. I can do this myself. Okay. So the telescope method just means that, like this time, you know, it starts at 1. It ends with n. So there are n many rows. Or equations. So when you sum the left-hand side, Daisy, what do you get when you sum the left-hand side? What do you get on the left hand side? Can you help your little sister? A n minus a zero. This is it, does it? You can sort out a one, a two, a three. So all's left is the this one and also this one. Okay? You, you missed the minus. It's minus a zero. So it's a n minus a zero. And on the right hand side, it's kind of two n because it you add it n times. Now a zero is five. So that means a n is equal to two n plus five. Okay. Um, so the last one I'll end with this is if you put n as two fifty eight, what is a n? Five twenty one. Okay, so remember the homework problem. So this is indeed five twenty one. 
was the 259th term. Remember the homework problem 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 8. <laughs> and then plus 521. So this is indeed the 259th term. Wait, and this is our mathematical question. Let me check. Wait, we just talked about it 20 minutes ago. The oh, right. problem. Oh, yes. right. Okay. I forgot. Um, one yeah. more thing. We're going to talk about method 2 and then we'll break. Method 2 is the one that I said is difficult useless. and not useful. Okay. I'm being very honest with the class. Okay? So there's something that are important, I will tell everyone. This one is not very useful. Uh, think of it as uh, if you're watching a show, and after that you can forget about this method too. You have to take your time. Okay, method two. Method two. Uh, it's called iteration. A n. Now this time is some number alpha. A n minus one plus a function f of n. And let me just remind everyone, this is a fake method. Yeah. Uh, I'll give an example, and after that we'll break. The example goes something like this: A n is equal to three times the previous term plus two and the first term is equal to one. No. Uh, do we have to take notes? Oh. You do. You do. Seriously? Because in uh, because in, in, in five to ten years the notes from the first quantum crack map circle might sell for millions on, on eBay. Um <laughs> you don't want to miss that chance. Okay? <laughs> So first of all, uh, the telescope method doesn't work, okay? Because you no longer have that like nice kind of canceling one another. So if you move the move the minus three and minus one here, it, you no longer cancel everything, okay? So then let's just just do the iteration method, which goes something like this. So a one is equal to three times a zero plus two. Uh, a0 is 1, okay, so that's, that's easy, so that's kind of 3 plus 3 plus 2. What is a2? a2 is equal to, uh, no computation, just tell me what a2 is. a2 is 3, three times a1 plus 2. Okay, so then... 3 times 3 plus 3 times 2 plus 2. A3 is 3 times A2 plus 2. Okay. Do it again. 3 times all of this, and then plus 2. So it's 3 times 3 times 3, plus 3 squared times 2, the 3 goes here, and then plus 3 times 2, and then plus 2. I'm going to do one more, and then to ask everyone, what do you see? So you multiply 3 and plus 2 again. What is the first term now? 3 to the power 4. Okay, I'm just going to call it 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And then you multiply 3 here again. Okay? And then you plus 2 in the end. Do you now see the pattern about what this kind of 3 times plus 2 do? Do you want 
Um, it's a geometric sequence. With a leading term? Yes. Um, Murphy, can you, without doing this, tell me what A5 would look like? So um, if you do this, then what it means is uh, when you do a n, the formula we are after is 3 to the power n plus 2 times, I'm swapping the order, 3 to the power n minus 1 plus and then all the way to plus 2 times 3 to the power 1 plus 2. If you want, you can do 3 to the power 0, but that's like this. Does it make sense? So you basically see, already see the pattern, what this kind of 3 times plus 2 is doing. Uh, now the 3 to the power n, you keep it. This, what is, what is this series called? Is it geometric or arithmetic? Geometric. Geometric. Uh, I'm going to continue the right hand side, and then after that we'll we're going to break. Okay. So a n is equal to the three to the power n plus two times, and then inside you got one plus three plus three to the power two plus all the way to three to Um, so this is, I, I reverse the order, two, I pull the two out, and then inside you have one plus three, plus three to the square, and then all the way to three to the n minus one. Now this one is geometric series. If you recall what the formula is, or if you do the shift, multiply, shift, and subtract, then you basically see that this is, I need to work for this. This is the formula. And 3 minus 1, 2, cancel this out. So then basically you have 3 to the power n plus 3 to the power n minus 1. Uh, now, you can forget about this method, uh, because this is actually very messy. I don't even know why the book that I was looking at called this uh, a method. It's basically nothing more than you just kind of... A way to spend your time. Yeah, you, you basically keep doing it, you observe a pattern, which is like useful, because this is what a lot of mathematics is about. You try the smaller number until you see a pattern. But I don't like, call this a method per se. Love it. Do you have a question? No? Okay. Well, in that case, I think that's it.